What's going on everybody? My name is Ben and welcome back to the bench for our final installment of Ben Builds with the Boys and our P38 by Academy. Today we're going to go ahead and finish off the build. We've got a lot of parts and pieces to install. We've got our decals, our flat coats, top coats, weathering, all that good stuff to do. So let's go ahead and jump in. Waste no time. Let's start having some fun. Now last time we went ahead and did some painting overall. We've got our olive drab up top, our neutral gray on the bottom surfaces. And so far so good. We have not of course glued in our wheels as you can see, but that's okay. We're going to add in some brake cables here. So we're going to move on today with our other parts and pieces like our propellers, which are all nicely painted up, assembled, ready to go. I got to say these are a little finicky with those individual blades, but we got them sorted. And we have our drop tanks ready to go as well that need gloss coat, some weathering, and we can go ahead and pop those on the model. So as you can see, we're looking good. We are ready for our top coat of gloss. And that's going to be some Pledge Revive It, basically future. And we're going to overcoat the entire model with that, let that dry for about 12 hours, and then we're going to jump on back and we're going to get those decals ready to go and applied. So let's go ahead and get this party started, guys. Lots to do today. Let's start having some fun.
All right, everybody, so we are back and we applied a nice gloss coat of Future over the entire aircraft, came in after it was nice and dry, applied our decals, and I got to say the decals weren't necessarily the greatest. These might be actually made by Academy, and I know those tend to be a little finicky when it comes to silvering. It just didn't really work as well as I would like, but we've got them on there. I will say, though, that some of the decals, you'll notice I didn't apply all the stencils because for some strange reason, when I put those stencils on the model, they absolutely disappeared. You can't see them. So I figured, you know what, why waste more time putting on a bunch of things you can't see? Let's just go ahead and put on the basic stencils, the basic markings, and then move on with the weathering and get this thing done. So that's what we're going to jump into now, guys. We've overcoated everything with a semi-satin coat of my own homemade mixture of Windsor Newton matte varnish and a little bit of future floor polish, about 50-50 mix. So we're going to jump in there now and start doing our weathering. And that's going to be a little troublesome, guys, because I don't really weather all that much. But I want to go ahead and jump in there, make some oil washes, do some dot filters which are super fun. Start doing some streaking and some staining of different oil paints here and there to get a little bit of weather, a little dirt, a little grime in there. And then just go ahead and start working on the rest of the parts like the wheels and do a little touch-up painting, get everything nicely installed, and then we'll be back and I'll show you guys what we come up with. So let's go ahead and keep on trucking, guys. We're getting there. Let's push on.
Now, all right, everybody, we are back. And so far, so good. The weathering has been a ton of fun. I've gone in and applied some dot filters, which were super, super entertaining to watch. I blended all of that in. I've gone ahead and used a little bit of panel lining here and there. I've done my own oil washes for different parts and pieces. Can't say it's perfect, but I like how it's coming along. So we're going to go ahead and darken in a few panels around the engine with a little bit more of our Tamiya panel liners and then kind of blend everything in with some white spirits. That's going to go ahead and get this, I think, a little dirtier. And I think it's going to really highlight some of those panel lines. Same thing with the other side. I figured that these parts and pieces would have been removed a lot on the actual aircraft to, you know, to service the engine and service the different parts and components. So I think a little extra grime and dirt probably serves us pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and add in just a little bit. And I'm just kind of blending in our panel line accents with some white spirits, keeping it dark on the edges and bringing it into the center, making it a little bit lighter there in the middle, just to give it a little bit more interest. So I like it. I think it's a lot of fun. And like I said, the weathering on this has been a blast. I don't know necessarily what I'm doing, but it's been fun. So I think we're on the right track. But now we're going to go ahead and jump in to the canopy section because I do have to do a little bit of work there. I want to go ahead and pose it in the open position and this kit doesn't really supply you with a way to do that. So I'm going to have to make my own hinge out of some styrene so I can go ahead and glue it in the open position, which also means I'm going to have to cut down the side windows because those would actually on the real aircraft go up and down like an old school car window. So we're going to go ahead and just cut those down and apply them in the down position so we can go ahead and kick that open and then we're going to jump in there and get all the rest of the areas installed and hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get this thing all set up. All right, let's keep it going.
Now, all right, everybody. So we are back and that went really, really well. I created my own hinge out of a simple piece of very thin styrene, folded it back on itself, and then just glued the canopy to it and then just reinforced it with a little bit of super glue. That worked really well, I'm surprised. And then for the side windows, I just grabbed my razor saw and I measured off about where I thought they would be and I just cut off the rest of the window, leaving just the top of it to go ahead and glue flat down onto the side railing. So that worked out beautifully. I've got that all dialed in. So now we've turned our attention over to the last little stages, which would be the aerial and a couple of the nav lights. Now, Charlie was talking about this aerial here in his video, and so I've taken a couple of key points from him. We're actually gonna make a wire lead that's gonna stick out a bit from that center hinge. That's gonna be where our aerial wires are gonna go ahead and thread through to go ahead and reattach to the different twin tails. So I'm gonna go ahead and just twist up some wire, put a little loop in the very end of it. We're gonna cut it down to size, use some super glue, and we're gonna glue that down to the center portion there on our own homemade hinge. That's gonna allow us to then string in that wire and it looks a little bit closer to what we have in real life. Now again, I'm gonna go ahead and use some super glue here, but I'm gonna be really, really careful not to fog our parts. Super glue does tend to fog clear parts, so I'm gonna be very careful not to drop this on any of the clear parts to make sure this is nice and dialed in. Drop a little bit of accelerator on there, and then we can string in our Easy Line. Now again, I know Easy Line isn't necessarily the best profile for an aerial wire. It actually should be a round wire, and Easy Line tends to be a little bit flatter. I'm okay with it. It is a nice product to use. So we're gonna go ahead and thread this through that little loop that we made in our wire lead. We're not going to make it too tight though because I don't want to pull this lead right off of the plastic. I didn't want to put too much super glue so it's not necessarily rock solid. It's not going to go anywhere but I don't want to put too much tension on it so we're going to keep it a little bit low on the tension side of things. String in our wire and we're going to glue it there to our other tail. Just a little bit of super glue and accelerator. Once that is all nicely dried I want to come in and do a little bit of extra touch up paint and just go ahead and paint over our super glue. That's going to assure that we don't really see a lot of those issues there. We just paint it over and then we'll add a little bit of white paint on the very end of this wire to kind of represent an insulator. And then I think we'll be good to go ahead and move on to the last little stage, which will be our final assembly and a little bit of our detail painting for our nav lights. And then lastly, let's go ahead and add a little bit of our clear blue and clear red for our wing navigation lights. So there's one here on the top, one on the bottom, on the other side as well. But there's also three lights on the very bottom of the center cockpit gondola. Those are going to be green, orange, and red. So that's going to be painted in here as well. And then I think at that point, we are done with this model. Pedo tubes on there. We've got our mass balances on there. We've got everything else installed. We've got everything weathered, sealed, painted, our hinges made. I think we are ready to go ahead and show you guys the final product. And we are back. We have everything dialed in. And I got to tell you, this was a heck of a build. The P-38 is one of those aircraft I've never really fully built one to completion. And this is my very first time actually getting in there and I think making a decent looking P-38. It's not perfect, mind you. This kit is not as easy as I would like it to have been. But here it is, our Academy 148 scale P-38F or well, a G in our version here all finished up and ready for the display case. I'm actually very pleased with what we've turned out. It's not the best kit out there on the market. The Tamiya kit would be way better than this one, but I gotta tell you, this is not a bad option if you don't wanna spend the kind of cash for the Tamiya kit. Check out the Academy kit. Just be aware there are a few fit troubles here and there. Let's get you a quick close-up and you can see some of the details we were able to wedge into this kit. As you might notice, I added in some gun dust around the nose there. Of course, some panel line accents here and there. I've added in the same on the engine, kind of darkened those panels down just a little bit so they do look a bit different. Of course, I've got our chipping on the center section of the wing and I added in our aerial. I did add in that awesome looking kind of gray matted chalky effect of the exhaust coming out of the superchargers. So that is something you see on a lot of P38. So I got that in there and then I tacked in our aerial on the very tail. Add a little bit of some white paint to represent an insulator and I think we are good to go with that. I've got our boarding ladder also deployed. I don't know if that's exactly right but it looks good enough. And then I went ahead and added in a lot of our streaks and oil stains and a little bit of leaks here and there. I tried to kind of draw that paint along there to give it a bit more weather, a bit more use. I think it works out pretty decently. It's not perfect but it's close enough as I can actually make it so I'm happy with it. Also made that hinge, as you can see, to kick that canopy open because I made a lot of detail in there and I don't want to miss out. So that's actually pretty decent. And I've got that wire lead coming right out of the middle of that where I strung through our easy line for our aerials. 
Flipping it over to the bottom, you can see those three lights there on the gondola. I've got our drop tanks in there, more oil streaks coming off of different panels and all that for the engines. It's not perfect, but like I said before, it's at least artistically representative of what we've got in our references, so I'm happy with that. And lastly, we've got our polished metal mirrors right here on the sides of the nacelles. And that was actually for a visual identification for the pilot to make sure his landing gears had either deployed or retracted. So that's going to be on both of the nacelles, and they're not exactly the right shape. They're a little bit more oval. They actually should be more like a football, but I used what I had, and I'm actually very happy with the all clad and black basing. Very shiny effect. But that is it, guys. We are all finished up with Ben builds with the boys. Big shout out to Charlie for inviting me into the buddy build. I had a blast with this one. Hopefully, we can do it again in the future. So thank you both for allowing me to build along with you. Make sure to go check out their channels. Check out their builds. They both built wonderful looking P38s. We're going to go ahead and drop this one in the display case and call it quits. And I gotta say, the Academy P38 isn't half bad. Detail isn't necessarily 100% correct, but you know what? It's like half the price of the Tamiya kit. So if you're interested in just a real quick, simple build, check out the Academy P38s. They're not half bad. If you're interested in a little bit more detail though, I hear from Joe that the Tamiya kit is absolutely beautiful. If you're looking for something a little bit more detailed, you might want to check out the Tamiya kit. But until then, guys, you know the drill. Go out there, get yourself some bench time, have some fun, build something cool. Make sure to drop on by Joe and Charlie's channel, drop them a like, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you back here on the next installment of Ben Builds for a new modeling adventure. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Take care of yourselves, and we'll see you soon.